everyone, just want to make a short video to let you know about something I saw that was very disturbing to me. Um, if you have teenage kids or anybody that's interested in superheroes, I think you should really watch this. Right to the end in order to understand the whole video. I came across a comic book just sitting there and so I opened it up and started looking at it. It was this one here, a Justice League comic book. And I uh, just want to show you just one page out of it. That's all I had time to look at. But this is the first, the, the first page I turned to is a very bad page. And this is what it says. I think that's Aquaman, I'm not sure, but he's saying, it's still talking. It says it's not alone. It says our time is up, that a judgment is coming. It, said, it says that its way would have been mercy. Batman, he, he, he chimes in. This is mercy. Leave. Tell the other Reapers. Tell everyone and everything like you that this world is protected. Superman says, whatever comes will face us. Well, the rest of them say, consider yourself warned. We stand guard here. We're the Justice League. Run. That's a disturbing thing, isn't it? Like, they're talking about some foreign alien coming to this world. And Aquaman says that he's bringing judgment. He would have brought mercy, but it's bringing judgment. And the superheroes of Justice League are protecting the world against this foreign alien power that's coming. Isn't that disturbing to you? And if it's not, then let this be um, maybe time for you to, to start opening your eyes because this, there is something coming. And in order to fully understand what this uh, comic book is talking about, we need to go to the Bible. The Bible tells us that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And so if you don't have any foundation, any scriptural foundation to go by, You'll read these comic books and you will not understand. You'll just think it's an alien power coming to destroy the world. The superheroes are going to protect us. Awesome. Great job, guys. Like, you know, these are our heroes. So it goes a little bit deeper than that. Let's take a look. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus says, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers, notice that, the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The son of man will send out his angels, or the reapers, and they will gather out his kingdom, all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So here it's talking about the second coming of Christ. And Jesus will come with all of his angels. And his angels are called reapers. You see where this, is, where this is going? Yes, when Jesus comes, there will be a judgment. Let's look at another text to see what, ha what will happen at the second coming. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So I just want to stop there and notice a few things. You notice how the Bible says sleep? It talks about the dead as being asleep. So when you die, you, you sleep in the grave. You don't, you're not a ghost or anything like that. And you remain there until the second coming of Christ. So there's going to be those who are alive and those who are dead. And then it continues. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, 
and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So here, when Jesus comes, the second coming, he will raise the dead from their graves. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And when the dead are raised from their graves, at the same time, the living that have remained until the end of the, this world, until the second coming, will also be raised up to meet the Lord in the air. Let's look at another text. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day, the second coming, will not come unless the falling away comes first, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And so again, at the second coming of Christ, the lawless one, the, the Antichrist, and all those that he deceived, which will be most of the world, will be destroyed at the brightness of his coming. Did it say that Jesus will kill people? No, it didn't say that. It said at the brightness of his coming, they will be destroyed. And why is that? Well, if you look further in the Bible, it, there are texts that tell you that sin, we, as sinful creatures, we cannot stand in the presence of God, that we will be consumed like a fire. And so for those that have not accepted Christ, they will be consumed like a fire. It's just like a natural law. It's like if um, sin were gasoline and you poured gasoline all over me, what would happen if I was in the presence of fire? I would I would ignite right so it's the same thing sin is like gasoline and Christ is like fire so um, that's the best way I could explain it so let's take a look at another one tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age and Jesus answered and said to them take heed that no one deceives you you know this is why I'm making this video because these comic books are deceiving children even maybe yourself as parents we need to really take heed for these things for many will come in my name saying I'm the Christ and will deceive many and you will you will hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet we see all these things happening we've seen people coming as Christ we've seen you know many inst instances of that We've seen wars and rumors of wars. And then it says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Are we seeing that today? Of course we are. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Are we seeing this? Yes, we are. But this is, Jesus continues, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, all these are the beginnings of sorrows. Well, what does that mean? Well, sometimes in the Bible, we need to go deeper. We need to go into the original languages to understand fully what Jesus was talking about. That word sorrows there, the original language, it means, it is it is the word odin, and it means birth pains. So all those things G Jesus was talking about, false Christs arising, nation rising against nation, wars, you know, starting up, um, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes, as you see all these things, just like birth pains, how they increase in intensity and frequency, these things are going to also increase in frequency and intensity. We've already begun to see it. It's just that we're desensitized to it. Like you remember back in the 90s, you didn't see earthquakes like this frequent and this strong. Um, famine has escalated and it's going to even get worse. Uh, pestilences, you know, we just went through COVID-19 and... There's much more to come. So these things are going to in intensify and increase. And this is what's happening. These are all signs of the second coming of Christ. And then he says, this is important. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So who's he talking to? He's talking to his people. It's not everybody. If you're not a follower of Christ, this will not happen to you. Okay? He's talking about his people. And so if you are not his people, then you're the ones that are going to be, you know, bringing in these actions to 
kill his people. And then it continues, many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. How do you think God feels when people are going to attack and kill his children? Like, how would you feel if somebody broke into your home and tried to kill your children? Would you want to protect them? Well, of course he would. And this is why Jesus comes. He, he returns to protect his children from the world that will turn against them and want to exterminate them. Jesus also continues later on and he says, Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So here Jesus is saying that he's going to come, otherwise people will just destroy themselves. But you know what? Jesus doesn't, he doesn't, he's not happy with, with, with uh, the destruction of the wicked. He doesn't want people to be judged. He wants to bring mercy. But that's your choice. It's up to you to choose that. In Ezekiel chapter 33, it says, Say to them as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die? So this is God's plea, that you would turn from your evil ways, from sin, and you would turn to God and repent of your sins and be saved. This is what he wants for you. He wants to bring you mercy. But if you don't accept his mercy, then you'll be by default accepting judgment when he comes. Another scripture is, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God and Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So again, he desires all all to be saved. He doesn't want to destroy anybody. Last one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. See, he did not, Jesus did not con come to condemn, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This is the reason that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. So there you have it. This is the reason, this is the reason why people are judged, is because they do not want to come to the light. And so, now that we've seen all these scriptures, let's go back to the comic book and see what it was actually saying. So Aquaman says, it's still talking. It says it's not alone. Do you remember when Jesus comes for the second time? When he comes to this world? He's gonna come with all of his angels? It says our time is up, that a judgment is coming. It says that its way would have been mercy. Do you see Jesus? He wants to extend mercy to you. He wants to extend mercy to everybody. But those, because they will not accept it, and eventually they will want to exterminate the world of God's people, he will have to return and bring judgment to them. Batman says, this is mercy leave tell the other reapers remember jesus says the reapers are the angels so batman is you know without i'm just changing the word here to the interpretation jesus gave us this is mercy leave and tell the other angels so he's telling jesus himself to leave and take his angels with him tell everyone and everything like you that this world is protected Whatever comes will face us. Consider yourself warned. We stand guard here. We're the Justice League. Run. You see this? The Justice League. Oh, they're false gods, basically. And they're, they're saying they're protecting this world from the second coming of Christ. You know, and I don't know if you see what I'm seeing 
If you can't see that, man, I don't know how much clearer I can make it. I know I can actually see some of you out there kind of scoffing and laughing and saying, you know, I think you're reading a little bit too much into that. Well, this is just one page of a comic book I'm showing you. This isn't the multiple hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of examples I could show you with everything else. But I just wanted to tell you something for these, those of you who are laughing about this, maybe thinking it's uh, taking light of it and saying, you know, not only are you making light of this, but, you know, Jesus hasn't, hasn't returned in like 2,000 years and he's not coming. So, you know, we're a scientific world and, you know, it's just never going to happen. I want to tell you, if you think like that, you're actually fulfilling a prophecy. I want to show you that prophecy right now. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. Why do they come? Because they are walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, or since the fathers died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So do you hear that? You hear this through science, right? Scientists tell you that ever since the beginning of the world, we've just lived and died and we're evolving into a greater thing. But the text continues. For this they willfully forget. And what does it mean? They willfully forget. They're choosing to forget. Okay? It's an important point. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. Do you know of a worldwide flood that the Bible talks about that destroyed all the wicked people and preserved the, the righteous people, the ones that followed God? What do they say about that flood? They say that it didn't happen. They're willfully, or in another word, they're choosing to forget. They're choosing to forget. But here it's saying that it was a, it's a fact. And then it says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So here it's saying that the same word that predicted the flood is predicting a coming judgment. But because most people willfully forget the first judgment, they're going to repeat themselves and they're going to take part in the second judgment. And they will not be delivered out of that. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the reason why he hasn't come yet is because he wants you to be saved. He wants me to be saved. He wants the whole world to be saved. And so he wants his word to go out. And he wants his word to go out with power and to convict people, to repent of their sins. And if you don't know what that means, to ask somebody that knows. To look into his word, to get to know what his word says. So you will not be deceived in these last days. And again, these comic books, like, look at that one page. It's just one page I'm showing you. That's not including all the movies out there of the superheroes that I could show you. Clip by clip, section by section, the spiritual deceptions that are happening around our world. I don't know how I could plead to you anymore and how much clearer I could make it.